Good morning, ladies. Um, I'm a little late getting started. We had some issues with my computer. Um, it didn't want to start up. It started loading a um, update, and it is still working. So I grabbed Chris's computer, and I'm sorry I'm a little late, but I just want to say thank you for being a part of this Bible study. This is the first lesson in 30 Days to Understanding the Bible. Now, once I get home, I'll have a hard copy of the book. But right now, we are still in Florida. We are leaving today. And so once we get home, of course, I will be using a hard copy to uh, do the study by. And I would much rather prefer to have a hard copy in my hand. Um, but we are going to talk about the Bible in this study. And this is not a study that's a real spiritual study. It's going to be more about learning what the Bible is, how it um, is put together, and how to use the Bible um, with the structure in mind, okay? So chapter one starts out telling you about the structure of the Bible, and it gives you an example of an engineer that's hired to go into a plant and look at a machine and try to figure out what's wrong with it. Well, the engineer goes in and he puts an X on the machine where the trouble is. And it says that uh, the manufacturer's people disassembled the machine, discovered to their amazement that the defect lay precisely where the chalk mark was located. Okay, and it says some days later, uh, they received a bill from him and they protested the amount and asked him, you know, you know, why it was so high. And he put making one chalk mark, one dollar, knowing where to place it, nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars. So because he knew uh, where the chalk marks needed to be placed, uh, it was worth that much money to him. Now, this says that learning about the Bible can be much about the same. Um, if you don't know much about it, it says it's like trying to cross the Sahara Desert blindfolded. And you can learn a few, uh, if you can learn where a few of the major chalk marks go, that um, we'll be able to use that as a valuable source of information. Now, the Bible is a spiritual book. I will put this in there. It is not just a source of information. Um, so I want you to know that as far as discernment goes and really understanding and having the wisdom that you need to understand the Bible, the Holy Spirit actually helps us with that. Once we come to know the Lord Jesus as our Savior and he sends us his helper, the Holy Spirit, then we can discern the words of the Bible much more um, easily. But this is not uh, a study about that. This is a study about the actual Bible and how it was put together. And um, so I just wanted to throw that in there. Um, he said, one day he discovered a key, and with this key, the fog that had, had um, covered his understanding, began to lift, which is the structure, okay? Then he goes in and he says, there's an Old and a New Testament, okay? And the Testaments, there's two major divisions, the Old and the New, okay? It says the Old Testament begins with the creation and tells the story of the Jewish people up to the time of Christ. So you got the Old Testament, telling the story of the Jewish people up to the time of Christ. Then you've got the New Testament. Um, the Old Testament is made of 39 books, okay? And it says that these books were written by 28 different authors, and it spans a period of over 2,000 years. It's a long time. And when it said that, I was thinking, you know, our timeline right now is 2018. And that starts at the birth of Christ. 
And so it's been 2018 years since Christ was born. And the Old Testament was written in, a, in that long of a period of time about the Jewish people. The New Testament is the record of the birth of Jesus. And it has 20, I believe it's, it's 27 books. And it's written by nine authors. Now, there's 28 authors in the Old Testament. There's nine authors in the New Testament. There's 39 books in the Old Testament. And there's 27 in the New Testament, giving it a, a total of 66 books. Now, if you've got the hard copy of the book, he will ask you to self-test after you read, and you will write down how many books are in the Old Testament. So if you don't have a hard copy and you're, and you're using your Kindle to use this, then have a notebook and a piece of paper when you're going about these studies. And when he gives you the self-test, so to get down, honey, uh, remind yourself you know, to write this down, actually write it down. So if y'all will write that there are 29, I mean, tw 39 books in the Old Testament. I probably said that wrong a while ago. There's 39 books in the Old Testament. Y'all need to write that down in your tablet. And then write down that there's 27 books in the New Testament. And that there's 66 books in the whole Bible. OK, so you are going to write that down so that you will know that. Now, he goes on in his book and shows us the names of the books of the Old Testament. And he lists them from beginning to end, starting with Genesis and ending with Malachi. OK, now I'm not going to do you like it. some of us were done in, in uh, Sunday school where we have to remember the books of the Bible because I just don't remember them. Chris still remembers them from that, and May still remembers them from that, but now, Amy and I have the kind of memory that we have to apply things in order to continue to remember them. We just don't conti continually remember stuff. Like, I can't remember my times tables anymore, but they can. So um, they just have a really good memory. In the New Testament, the books start with Matthew, and they end with the book of Revelation. Okay, so um, so you can just read through them if you want to. In the Old Testament, it says, here's the key to understanding the Old Testament. And remember again, I'm going to repeat this over and over. There's 39 books in the Old Testament. And there are, how many authors were there? 28 authors in the Old Testament. Am I saying author right? I always say it wrong. My kids get on to me. It says, of the 39 books in the Old Testament, there are three different kinds of books. So y'all write these down. In the Old Testament, there are historical books, poetical books, and prophetical books. Now, it says, what kind of information would you expect to find in historical books? History, of course. So under the historical books, just write history. Um, it says the information you would expect to find in a poetical book is poetry. So under the poetical books, write poetry. And then the information that you would expect to find in the prophet. Medical books, of course, is prophecy. Um, so y'all can write that down too. It says, if you know what kind of book you are reading, then you will know what kind of information you will expect. Okay? So if you're reading a historical book, you will expect history. If you're reading a poetical book, you're going to expect poetry. Okay? Um, and that way, you can easily follow the logic. Okay? And that is the uh, logical flow of the Old Testament. The first 17 books in the Old Testament, the first 17, are historical. Okay? So write that down. So let's say, let me count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's Genesis through Esther. 
that is historical. I'm making sure I'm counting right. Okay. And once I'm home, y'all, and I'm not in Florida, y'all have a better view and I'll have better notes and all that stuff. But it's been, it's kind of wild to start a study when you're uh, packing to leave. All right. The first, the next five books are poetical. That would be, if we, if we stopped in Esther, that would be, uh, there's five poetical. So that's Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the Song of Solomon. And of course, y'all know I love Solomon. So the three books, which are, I mean, the yeah, the Proverbs, the Ecclesiastes, and the Song of Solomon uh, are, are Solomon's, I do believe. And so you've got five poetical books there, okay? And then the rest of the books that are left are... Isaiah through Malachi, which are uh, prophecy. They're prophetical. I guess I'm saying that right. So you've got an idea now that the Old Testament, now we know, has 39 books written by 28 authors. I always say it wrong. How do you say it? Author. I want to say Arthur. Arthur is a name, isn't it? Okay. Um, sorry, y'all, but I'm just a no country girl. Um, I lost my train of thought. So the Old Testament, now we know, has 39 books, 28 authors it has historical books poetical books prophetical books the first 17 are historical then there's five poetical and then the remaining are prophecy new testament we're going to start here oh well let's wait he says some more stuff he says um, the Old Testament is the story of the Hebrew nation. It's the historical timeline for Israel. Now, he shows you a timeline of the Old Testament in his book, which shows you when these books were written. And so, it's pretty interesting to see uh, when the books are written, okay? And let me give you just an example. As you can see, Job was written during the time period of the book of Genesis. So the book of Job is a poetical book, but it was written at the same time that Genesis, the first book of the Bible, was written, okay? So if you want to take a look at the timeline, that's really good information to kind of give you an idea of when these books were written uh, compared to each other. He also uses, uh, he constructs a similar chart of U.S. history so that you can look at the timeline of U.S. history and get an idea of how that worked in the United States for the history of the United States. Um, and then he talks about the New Testament. So in your book, in your study, take a look at the timeline. Really look at which books were written when. So, I mean, you're not going to remember it, you know, but just kind of gives you an idea that the book is not written in a chronological. I mean, the Bible is not written in a chronological order from beginning to end. OK, like a lot of us think or some may have thought. Okay, the New Testament is 27 books, and it has also three different kinds of books. It has historical books, the Pauline epistles, and general epistles. It says the, the historical books are four gospels, 
and they're the Acts of the Apostles. Amen. The epistles were letters written to individuals and the church congregations. And then the Pauline epistles were letters written by the Apostle Paul. Um, the general epistles were letters written to individuals and congregations by a number of different people. The primary content, content, I'm sorry, in the epistles is the instruction on Christian doctrine and lifestyle. So in the New Testament, you have, I believe it's 27 books, ain't it, Chris? 27 books written by nine authors, or was it eight? Anyway, I'm going to look back and see. But you've got the history, which is the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Then you've got the epistles. Some of the epistles are written by other people, and then the Pauline epistles were written by Paul. It says, um, of course, the historical books are history of the New Testament, and the Pauline, Pauline epistles are instructions, and the general epistles are instructions for the Christian, okay? It says the first five are the historical. The next 13 are Pauline epistles. And then the next nine are general epistles. So you've got Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts are the historical. Then you've got the churches to the churches. Romans through 2 Thessalonians are Pauline epistles written by Paul for our instruction. And then you've got the general epistles, Hebrew, through Revelation. They were written by other people, but they are instructions for the Christian to the church and the congregations. All right. And you have some that were written to in individuals, and those were written to Timothy, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. Um, it says, if you read the story of Jesus in the church, he established, you must read the first five books of the New Testament, the five books from the historical framework for understanding the entire New Testament. Um, let's see. All right. That's pretty much that in a nutshell. Then he tells you how to read the references to the Bible. So he says they will list the book of the Bible first, like Genesis, as an example. They will list the chapter second, um, and then they will list a verse as a third reference after the semicolon. So Genesis 1, semicolon 1 would be Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. So he teaches you the referencing in the Bible. And then he goes to a summary and he summarizes what we've just spoken about. Now, the reason I like this book is because it's very repetitive. And my memory, I need to be, I need to have things repeated to me. And the best way I learned in college when I was in my classes, now in high school, you know, I, made A's and I didn't have a hard time except I had a hard time in history because I wasn't interested in history. Um, but one thing I learned about college, it was, I would think I aced a test in the first few tests I took and I would go in thinking I'd done really well. And then I would get my tests back and they were terrible grades and I would just cry. And I realized what I had to do to study with my type of memory which is more of an applying type memory. And I'm the same way with remembering people. I had Linda Taylor ask me yesterday, did I know a girl from Cedartown? It was in a photograph. Um, and she said it was posted on my wall, but Linda, I don't, I don't remember that photograph being posted on my wall, but it was a, um, 
reunion picture of a class that were several years uh, behind before me. And so I saw people that I knew in there well, like Angie Couch, who is from Collard Valley. Of course, I remember Angie Couch because she hung out and, you know, we've seen her growing up. But the rest of them, of course, I only knew a few faces. I've, I've seen a popular football player. Of course, I remembered his name because everybody knew his name. But the majority of the people in that photo, I have no idea who they are. And she said the girl knew me, but the girl that knows me probably has a better memory than I do. So with all of that said, I learned in college that I had to read out loud. Now, the reason I'm telling you guys this is because if you have a memory like mine, that it really, really helps to read out loud. When you're reading, if you read out loud, you're actually, you're actually hearing yourself say it. So when I was in college, I read everything out loud as I took notes. So I would say it, take the note. And when I studied, I did the same thing over again. I would read it out loud. I would take notes again. It was the only way I could, I could graduate for heaven's sakes. I was going to an engineering school and it was really hard and it was way different than high school. Okay. So that's what I like about this book. What I like about this book and what I like about this study is this man starts in the beginning of a chapter. He tells you information. He repeats it throughout the chapter at the end. He gives you self tests along the chapter. Then at the end, he gives you a summary and another test. That helps you learn and remember what you're studying. Okay, it really makes a huge difference. So if you don't have a hard copy of the book, I suggest you get one because they're cheap and just use your Kindle um, until then. And it, it's fine if you want to use your Kindle or if you just want to follow along with us, just make sure you take your notes. OK, it says there are 39 books in the Old Testament. There are 27 books in the New Testament. There are 66 books in the whole Bible. The Old Testament is the story of God and the Hebrew people, their poets and their prophets. There are three kinds of books in the Old Testament. There are 17 historical books. There are five poetical books and 17 prophetical books. The New Testament is the story of Jesus of Nazareth. The church he founded and its growth under the leadership of his apostles after his death. Okay, there are three kinds of books in the New Testament. They are five historical books, 13 Pauline epistles, and nine general epistles. So he gives you a self-test, and he asks you to fill in the blanks at the end of the chapter and tomorrow we will start chapter two now some of you may think this is boring and that it's repetitive but let me say this there's nothing boring about the word of god um, it is fun and each time we go through these chapters we will learn more and more about this wonderful book that god has given us uh, it's the only way he speaks to us it's a true miracle of God. Many people search for miracles in their life and they want to see a miracle happen. And what we need to realize is this book is the best miracle of all, aside from his, him sending his son, which is all about his son. So this book should be held in a lot more higher um, what would you call it, Chris? Esteem. Esteem than it is. Many of us have it in our homes. It has sat on our mantle. It has sat on our coffee table. It has been seen by our children and our grandchildren. We carry it to church, but we need to know more about this wonderful, miraculous miracle of God, his word. And we are going to learn it through the study it's going to help us and it's going to be a blessing for us, for those who know us, 
and for our future. Okay. Thank you for joining in. And I'm sure my other studies will be uh, much more comfortable, have a better, clearer picture and all that good stuff. And I promise I will be better, uh, better prepared. This morning I got up, I thought two hours early. I am, I am on Alabama time. So actually, y'all, I thought that I was supposed to start this in 15 minutes. So I was thinking I had all the time in the world and I realized about, I guess God helped me because right about eight o'clock, I looked down at the clock. He said, look at the clock. And I realized, oh my goodness, I'm supposed to go on Eastern time. And boy, was that a problem when I opened my computer and it was starting up with a, uh, what do you call it? Update. So anyway, thanks for bearing with me on the first day of Bible study here in Alabama. While I'm not on the right time, I mean Florida. Uh, Lord, see how my mind is? I think Alabama because we're at, right at Lillian and we just went over there last night to fish. When you've seen us fishing, when we put in, we're in Alabama. When we were fishing, we were in Florida. So, you know, hey, we're Alabama, Florida line. So y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day in the Lord. We're going to say a prayer and we're going to see you tomorrow. And hopefully I will make it shorter next time. I'll just hit the highlights. And maybe I'll just go over the reviews um, instead of going through the whole chapter. That's probably what I'll do is I'll go through the reviews and we'll talk about uh, any questions y'all might have. Y'all can always ask me and um, we can talk about it. Okay. Let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your book. We thank you so much for this Bible study, 30 Days of Understanding the Bible. We thank you for Mike, I mean Max Andrews, who took the time to love you enough to want to spread your word, to want to show us how he came to an understanding of your word, so he decides to share it with us. We thank you for him. We thank you for our lives. We thank you for this new Monday morning that we have woken up. We pray that you would help us in our day, keep us safe, keep our family safe, keep our loved ones um, safe. And may we see you throughout the day. May you use us as you would, uh, your will, I'm sure, would be for us to spread your gospel, love you, and shine our Christian lights throughout the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a blessed, blessed day. Thank you. Bye. See you tomorrow, 8 a.m. Eastern Time.